Hey guys, Trevor Boone from Emerald City Guitars. If you know anything about our shop, you know that we love vintage guitars, specifically old Fender, Gibson, Martin, but old Fender Black Guards, the early, early Fender releases, are our favorites. The name is pretty self-explanatory. We're focusing on this black pit guard right here, and they just kind of get this name, Black Guard Tellies, Black Guard P Bases. It's kind of like the Model T, you can get any color as long as it's black. There weren't a lot of color options unless you were a famous musician playing on the Nashville stage. So they were popping it out in butterscotch, with the black pit guard, kind of like a bumblebee. These are the earliest fenders that were being released out of the factory, and they fully encompass all that cool swirl and voodoo that we talk about and collectors lust over. These two guitars came to the shop this week. They're going to different parts of the world, and they came from the same factory back in 1950, and while they're here, we just want to do a little something different, at least kind of introduce you to these two instruments before they ship out. So to my right, I'm going to introduce this 1950 Fender Broadcaster, which if you're a Fender guy, if you're a Tele guy, this is the holy grail right here. It was the first mass-produced electric guitar alongside the Esquire, which is the one pickup model. Actually routed for two pickups, but they only put one in there, so you kind of had an affordable student model. But the Broadcaster was the first real deal two pickup electric guitar that Fender was putting out. If you know the whole story, right after that, Gretsch had a drum kit called the Broadcaster. They had the whole season to assist. They had to yank that name off. So it just said Fender, that's the Nocaster. Up until 1951, when they finally settled on the name Telecaster and the rest is history. We love the name, it's stuck. But we have to honor the early broadcasters. They're just so cool. In general, they're a little bit different vibe. They're a lot of times a little heavier body. They're still working on the neck profile. Some of my favorite things is looking inside. You see TG or Tadio Gomez spelling his name with an H. They're just, it's, it's unbelievable to unravel these. It's like looking through an old book and blowing the dust out. We literally, when this, something like this comes in, we huddle around it like a campfire. We're talking, it's just, it's a special deal. It's got some really great provenance. All these old broadcasters are guilty until proven innocent. So you have to do quite a, quite a bit of field work if you're not getting it from the family to make sure exactly what you're looking at. And this guitar, it's been, it's been documented. It's past all the big techs and all that. One of my favorite things about this guitar is that it's six and a half pounds. Broadcasters get heavy. This is just one of those good ones. Super light, it's really resonant. The pickups are hot. What else can you ask for? An original Fender Broadcaster. Okay, next to me, a 1953 Blackguard Fender P bass. These are the coolest basses ever. We just had a 51 here that was probably, we determined it was about the third P bass ever made. It was a really special bass. Then this one came in. So this guitar has the coolest history, but it belonged to a gentleman who basically was hanging around a bunch of guitar players back in the early 50s, and they're trying to talk him into playing bass, but he didn't want to you know, haul around this big upright bass. One of his fellow guitar pickers said, you know, I think Fender just came out with an electric bass, and sure enough, they go down to the local music store and they ordered in a brand new electric Fender bass, and that's what you're looking at right now. The guy played it in bands, we have pictures of him jamming on it, and he passed it on to his son in the 60s who immediately started playing it as well. Played that his whole life, and his name was actually Ron, so that's the son who put these on early 60s, so it's been on forever. When we got this bass, the neck had never been off, not a screw change, it's just like, it's straight from the family, from the barn, you don't see that. That's everything to me, it is so cool, and again, it's super lightweight, it's so vibey, it's a, it's a really cool piece to have. So, why I'm doing this? It's because we have a 1950 broadcaster, the holy grail of Fenders, to me, the holy grail of Fender basses, they're going to two completely different parts of the world, and you know, every once in a while this happens with an old Tweed amp and an old Tele, but just to have these both in the same room, they start in that same factory, the same people making that neck, they've had different lives, and of course, they come together at Emerald City Guitars, and I don't know. I just, I had to ramble a little bit. I love this stuff. We're all, we all got goosebumps about it, so if you guys have any questions about Blackguard Tellies, early Tellies, early Strats, we really, really pride ourselves on being the guys for that. We've had so many of these through the shop. We have people all over the world who reach out to us as their resource. Thank you for that. We, are, we love that. It's really flattering. And uh, yeah, when these come in, we document it all. We take pictures and we try to just have these just to continue the reference because 
That's history, it's awesome. All right, so we really just threw this together just to share this with you. I have to ship these today. I cannot play them, so I'm sorry for the tease. The boxes are out there, I need to get them out. Thank you to the new owners who let me show you guys these two cool pieces. If you wanna know what they sound like, keep watching our channel because we get this stuff in. Subscribe, like, share. Thank you guys, see you soon.